everybody. Hope everybody's doing good. This is Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, hope everybody, again, hope everybody's doing good. Look, uh, I'm a firm believer that sometimes, despite how uncomfortable and inconvenient it is, you are still required to stand up and step out and speak truth. Uh, and I've always been that way. Uh, those who follow me know that I'm not the start a beef, go attack a black man, tear a black man down, look for everything wrong with the other people who may be getting more airplay and time than you and go attack them. If nothing else, you get you get you get a buzz going and you get something going. Anybody's follow me knows that's not my M.O. My M.O. is unless I see you as an absolute enemy of the people. I'm going to come to you behind closed doors and I'm going to reach out to you and I'm going to try to find out what's going on. Uh, and even if I don't agree with what's going on, I'm going to try to work it out with you. But if I determine that you are in all instances an enemy of my people, then I'll come for you. But not because not in the sense of, OK, you made a mistake. Everybody makes mistakes. Everybody has different philosophies. There are some people who, you know, who have bigger, much bigger platforms than I have, who have done some things that I consider to be way out of line. Um, and other people knew about it and asked me, why am I not speaking on it? Because I think starting a beef or something that happened to me personally, and this is stuff they did to me, stuff personally, it, this thing is bigger than me. This thing is bigger than me. It's not about my ego. And I've said that a long time ago. So I don't go out starting stuff. And I'm saying that because this whole thing with the Tulsa Real Estate Fund and Jay Morrison and now uh, from someone who is declaring themselves to be his lead investor or his bigger and in, biggest investor, uh, Julian Gordon, who I do know for a fact has been in the game for a while and does move around in the real estate investment arena. Uh uh, he's being called out by Julian on YouTube. Uh, the video is getting some some hits. Uh, I'm not here to pounce on Jay Morris, and I'm here to talk about structure. I'm here to talk about the need for truth and transparency. I'm here to talk about uh, what this means in the grand scope of building unity and trust. Uh, those who know me know that I've consistently talked about the need to have support uh, for the work I do in the community. And I'll be directly honest with you so I can move on with this. We definitely do need the community support. Uh, now, there's a difference between someone giving to an organization and someone giving to an investment fund. And I'm going to break that down and I'm going to talk about why the model was not a good model from the beginning. And Julian should have known that, but I think Julian got caught up in the charisma and the idea. You know, uh, Julian also understands sometimes people with 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 checkered past make the great greatest. Uh, and I think he even makes the comparison between Jay Morrison and Jay Z and a bunch of other stuff, which I'm not really all that into. But I get what drove him to think, okay, let's try it. And I mean, the Tulsa Real Estate Fund, everybody talks about Black Wall Street. But let me tell you something. There's a difference between people who are giving to something because they believe in the person that's doing something and a person giving, saying I'm investing and I'm expecting a return on my investment. And that's what these people are doing. But I'll tell you, I've gotten, relatively speaking, very little in the support. You know how I support you? I always tell you it's me. You want to know how I support? Uh, I've supported... Uh, the Odyssey project for the last 20 years, it was either cash on hand and when cash got tight during those dark times, I leveraged the value of my company. I literally borrowed against the value of my company to promote and support the work I did in the community from research to program development to working in the inner city to helping people pay rent to providing services and mental health, all this stuff I did. There are months that I don't get but ten dollars, and the only reason I get that, and I don't want to marginalize it because a person gives me ten dollars is a vote of confidence, the same way a thousand is. But the only reason I get that is there's a person who pledged, look, like two years ago, to pay ten dollars a month, and they do it every month like clockwork. 
other than that, it's sporadic. There's another person, uh, a young lady, and I said I would, I promised I wouldn't put her name out there, but she's given a couple hundred um, several times since March. Other than that, 25 here, $30 there. And you've got to know that does not support the work we do at the Odyssey Project. But again, one of the things I think that has always made me not address this whole tussle, because this thing is is t is out of head now, but it, the questions have been out there for a while. And the, one of the things that has made me not to is that I think there's al already a lack of trust. There's already this disconnected thing where we can't see the value in getting behind things financially. And there is a level of distrust. There's also people who take it and misuse it and abuse it. And I get it. And so one of the things that really helped me is like, man, I already can't get support. I go out here talking about this and, you know, what little support I get, I won't get anyway. And the bottom line is what little support I get. And again, I'm not trying to belittle or marginalize anybody. I'm talking about in the relative relative to what has to be done and the support I'm getting. If everybody stopped giving, I would feel it. But barely. I mean, like, you know, I would feel it just because it's not there. We, I mean, for me to really be concerned, I would have to be getting a whole lot more. For me to be even thought of or considered a grifter, I would have to be. It costs me more to do these videos than I get it given. Trust me, I, there's so much more I could be doing in business to do it. And it costs me because it comes from my business to do the work I do in the community. With that being said, I and a partner of mine started an organization a long time ago of a lot of different rules that's how the blueprint for uh the blueprint uh for black empowerment 1.0 came out that's how i started uh and got connected with dr claude anderson back in 2013 2014 our partner and i started putting things together and what we did is we looked at all the people who had uh social media followings uh dr boyce watkins tyreek nasheed uh, uh dr umar johnson uh, Dr. Claude Anderson and Jay Morrison was making noise and a couple of other people uh, that had channels or something like that. And we looked at who had the greatest followers, who do we want to connect to, who do we want to make a part to. Um, the person that responded most readily, believe it or not, was Tariq Nashi. Every email I ever sent him, he responded to. Uh, then Dr. Claude Anderson, but his wife, Joanne, responded initially and she said because of his age she has to kind of screen people who are trying to reach out to him because he's so passionate about what he does if you put it out there he's gonna say yes and his health uh isn't re re allowing this and I i'm really concerned because this was literally almost 10 years ago and then dr umar johnson um whatever you got to say about the guy he's big enough and bad enough to, to defend himself i don't get involved and in all i can tell you is uh his expertise in special education and what's going on with special young black boys i have sent a number of my clients who i couldn't help i've been able to help a lot of people get their children's children out of those programs and to advocate for them i've gone to battle with a number of different school districts charlotte hisd aldine a, bu a bunch of others uh, some in um, South Florida. I've gone to war uh, with them for little black uh, kids, specifically little black boys, wrote a position paper on special the disproportionality in special, edu uh, special education referrals for young black boys and the use of psychotropic drugs as a means of control. Uh, but I had sent people to him and he helped them for free. Uh, whatever else is going on, I'm gonna leave that to that. But he helped them for free, uh, and I and so that that's that's what's that. So he did. Uh, Jay Morrison was the one person that never responded, uh, and the goal was to put everybody in a room, uh, bring the minds from finance, the minds from psychology, the minds from propaganda and media. Tyreek, bring all these people in to one space. There were a couple of people who didn't want no part of it. I'm not going to call their names, but, I, you know, obviously, if I haven't said they've, they've, they've contacted me, you know who they are. Uh, but 
the thing is, there was always something that was like, okay, what's up with this guy? But I'm always give a person a chance. Everybody makes mistakes. I'm not one to judge anybody because I have a past. I am not a perfect person. I'm not going around and purposely screwed nobody, but I'm, I'm not perfect. So I, 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 I give people, you know, room to be human. I, I apply grace, and I think that's something we need to all learn. So I'm not out trying to judge people. I'm trying to build people up. I'm trying to lift people. So I'm looking at that, but I'm study asking. And then when I heard about the Tulsa um, real estate fund, I'm going, uh, but, you know, hey, if you can do it. Now, I'm going to tell you what happened. When I hear how much money the Tulsa real, fund, real estate fund is making, I'm excited. Why? Because we've got black people putting into something more than black people have done in the past. We've done something. We gave uh, Umar the business about, I think, the 500000 that he ra raised towards the $2 million he was trying to raise. We gave him the business. Uh, I don't know anybody else that's come close to what Umar had did at that point. And here we are, uh, 11 point something million. And here we go. So I'm excited because somebody has been able to tap in. Somebody's gotten people involved. But here's the thing you got to understand. Again, I'll point this out. When you're talking about an organization, whether it's the Odyssey Project, whether it's uh, any organization out there that's contributing to the community, and you say, okay, I'm going to give to them. You're saying, I believe in what you're doing. I'm supporting you. I'm giving to you. Uh, I'm trusting you're going to do something good with this. Uh, and you can normally look at a person and see the work they're doing. You can normally look at the person and tell their value. Some people are giving you their value just by giving you the information they're giving you. You got to ask, is the information I'm getting worth giving? Because that person spends time reading, studying, and learning to be able to come and disseminate stuff that should empower you, that should give you information, that should set you on a track. But you determine what value the person is and you donate. Now, the donation is still given in good, you know, uh, in good faith. It's saying, I'm trusting that you're doing something for my people. And those are the things that I take to heart, you know. And the thing is, I can, with, 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 with uh, great confidence and uh, clear conscience, ask for support because you guys aren't going to catch up with me given to my own cause. I financed my work in the community. So you're not going to catch up with me doing that. So, I, yeah, in good faith, I ask, hey, come help a brother out. Share some of the load with me. Let's do this together. Us together can do a whole lot more. So then when this pops up, I'm going, you know, once I go out here and I address this, first of all, I got to make sure that my focus is on the central element or component of investing and honesty and transparency and not some shot at Jay Morrison. You're going to make up your mind about this dude. You're going to go, you want to go hear what's going on and see what's going on. But I'm going to tell you something, and this is for anybody. The first and foremost things I'm going to tell you, principles that you need to understand. If you're going to invest, don't invest anything that you cannot afford to lose because there's no guarantees. That's the first thing I'm going to tell you. Uh, in the past, I have uh, done situations where I've done what's called guaranteed return on principles. Uh, fortunately, I've only had a, one situation where I've had to pay it back uh, when something didn't go well. Uh, but 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 the thing is, that's that's not a regular, and I wouldn't advise that as a good investment model to those people who are looking for investments. What you need to do is be up on your game, know what you're investing in, know how to move and manage people's money to the best of your ability. Here's the problem that I saw immediately uh, with the Tulsa Real Estate uh, Fund is no board of trustees, no accountability for the person running the fund. He had access to the fund. Uh, some of the things other, you know, that, 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 that I've seen come up as qu in question is the percentage he's charging on uh as a management fee now granted let me let me let me let me let me make this clear anybody that's running an, uh, an investment fund a hedge fund anything like that there is a management fee based off the total fund total cash on hand of the fund which is one of the things that i've kind of uh gathered that was being done the the fund was remaining cash heavy instead of the ac acquiring assets because that's where the cash flow was coming for the person managing it 
Um, and so what that means is instead of investing in holding assets, let me explain something to you. Number, number one, if you don't understand, uh, I don't want to get into you, what I've done is I've actually written on wealth building. I've created several courses and you can get the course you can learn. I am not trying to get anybody to invest in anything. Um, I'm not asking anybody in any of my wealth building programs. There's nothing I'm asking you to invest in except the program to learn. My promise is if you go to the program, you're going to learn about wealth. Other than that, I'm not asking. But here's the thing. When you ask somebody to invest, you've got to be saying, I'm going to do the best I can to manage the money because they're trusting me uh, with their financial future. And here's what you have to learn as an investor. I'm never going to invest anything more than I can lose. And I'm definitely not going to invest what I, my totality of my, uh, at, al, you know, my, my, my fund allocation into one particular assets. Diversification across assets has to be a primary principle of investing, meaning that I'm not going to put any I'm not going to put all of my money into any one particular asset. I'm going to invest across assets based off of the potential of the asset to produce. Now, here's the thing. When you keep cash heavy, when you stay cash heavy, when you keep funds around, other than what need, you know, for paying bills and stuff like that, when you keep funds around, you are leaving your funds and your, 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 your liquid assets in a vulnerable place. What do I mean by that? That I mean that nothing is more volatile right now than the U.S. dollar. Everybody's taking shots at the U.S. dollar right now. You got the brick and you got all this other stuff that's going on that is a challenge to the U.S. dollar. Plus, the U.S. dollar isn't, back, isn't backed by anything of value. We took it off the gold standard in 1971. So how does the U.S. dollar keep its value? Through bullying and manipulation around the globe and uh, in the markets and in geopolitics and in debt this is a debt driven economy a debt based economy we have to convince consumers to spend more money than they have not just to spend but to spend more money than they have because when you spend more money you have you have to get it on credit when you get it on credit you create debt people are buying the debt because the debt has value the debt is literally the value that's back in the US dollar and still it's depreciating in value so when you keep Cash on hand, and we're talking about starting out with eleven million dollars. At one point, it was eight or nine million. They only bought several properties, uh, and so there was there, there, there's a lot going on that you can go watch the video. I'm not going to get too deep off into all the things he talks about because it's a lot going on. But the first thing is, um, it's too cash heavy. But it's cash heavy, obviously, because that's how he's getting paid. He's getting paid on the cash and the fund. He's drawing 5% probably monthly um, on the fund. So if the cash goes down in the fund, he doesn't draw 5% on assets. He draws 5% on the cash. So he's keeping cash. If the problem is if you're not putting that cash into something to where it can grow and you study charging 5%, it's 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 the equivalent to an inflationary uh, influence. It's I'm taking 5% off. That's just like inflation. I'm, I, it's not growing. And, and if you have, a, say, for instance, you got in a bank account playing 3.5%, but you're taking 5% every month, you're still diminishing the fund. And then a bunch of other things that this guy talks about that are questionable. My thing is, uh, I can't speak to the intent of Jay Morrison. I'm not going to speak to the intent of Jay Morrison. I can only speak to what I see in the facts. The facts are, number one that it should have been a better business model, investing model, that should have been a board of trustees that governs how things are done and votes on things. Um, if Jay Morrison is 100% full-time working and this is how he's you know, investing 40 hours of his day is into trying to bring assets into this fund, trying to make collaborations to build the fund and grow the fund, then I'm not going to trip on the 5%. But the average is roughly around 2.5% 2, 2 on a management fee. So it's a little high, three at tops. So it's a little high. But then again, other people are working with a lot more volume and a lot more capital. And so it it, uh, it, it, it pans out, you know. So, again, you know, that's that. But 
some of the things I'm not going to throw out there because you can go see it. My thing is I'm not trying to trash this guy. What I'm trying to talk about is what we need to do to understand investing and understand this. Uh, understand investing. Understand the need to not let this salty us. And this is the reason why it's important to speak on. I didn't want to speak on it because it's it's negative, um, and we love to jump on negative stuff. Um, but at the same time, I have to stand for what's right. I have to stand for what's truth, even when it's uncomfortable, even when it's convenient, even when it may have a negative impact on me. The the the, the good thing about uh, any negative impact it can have on me is going to be minor because I don't get. Uh, any type of significant funding from anybody uh, uh, that's sad being the work I've done and how long I've done it but it is what it is those who want to support me will support me uh, those who don't see the value won't and I, I can't stop and I can't muddle around in that but there are other people out there who really need support. There are other people out there who really have good plans. There are other people out there who really have some great ideas. The first thing is we need to bring our minds together. We need to be able to come together, sit down. We need uh, people who are uh, experts in military science, people who are experts in economic science, people who are expert in educational uh, logistics and science. We need people who are experts in health, whether it's physical health or mental health. We need all of us sitting down and looking at the totality of what's going on in the black community and coming up with solutions. We need to create think tanks within, any, which, within each of these areas and and and. and and staff them with unbelievable minds and researchers that are willing to delve deeply into the causality. This is something I've done for uh, 30 plus years. And I've chronicled it in books. I've chronicled it in thousands of academic papers. I've chronicled it in over 30,000 art, uh, prose articles. And I will continue to do so. I can't tell you how many videos I've done, how many lectures I've done, uh, how many workshops and conferences I've done. Uh, I've never turned a person down for a conference. I've never set up and said, this is my fee. If you can't pay this, I'm not coming. I have said, look, whatever you can pay me, just make sure I get there. And, and, and we, I've, we've gotten it done. And I've been ridiculed by my advisors that I need to be more stiff on that. But my thing is, I'm about helping us win. And sometimes I think I give more of myself than I should. Um, and then, then I'm reminded that at some point it will come back to me because I'm really, truly doing the best that I can, uh, to be a positive influence. What I really and truly want to bring home here is number one. Investing is just that. It is a process of putting something into something, expecting a return, but also being aware of the fact that things can go wrong. Unfortunately, the things that have gone wrong here are more in line uh, with mismanagement, um, the bringing in of friends and family and a bunch of other things and no accountability. It's so important to have a structure to where everybody's held accountable uh, when you're messing with other people's money. And this is one of the reasons why when we first started this thing, it was supposed to be an investment thing. And I was like, I don't want the responsibility of handling somebody's money on that level. This many people uh, all sitting up and saying it because I understand how things can go. I understand that even with the best intentions, things can go wrong. And so I just didn't want the headache. I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm going to keep hanging on what I'm best at. And that's sociology and psychology and problem solving. I'm going to leave the whole money thing to the Boyce Watkins, the Jay, Jay Morrisons and uh, the Claude Andersons and, 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 and those people who literally that's their thing. I'm, I'm going to let them do it and I'm going to let the people figure out where they want uh, to put, put their head in that. Uh, the, the idea was good. 
the intent, I don't know because I'm not there. Uh, I can go on what people are saying, but everybody's got an opinion. Uh, I was never able to get an audience with him to have the conversation. I tried more than once. Uh, again, I would love to sit down and have a conversation with him and talk with him. Uh, and I'm not going to speculate why I didn't get the audience. I can just say I didn't. Uh, I can say the people who did give me an audience. Um, I've sat down with Dr. Boyce Watkins and I've actually participated in the national conference. Uh, I communicated with Tariq Nasheed. I've communicated with Dr. Umar Johnson. I've communicated with Dr. Claude Anson and his wife, Joanna. Uh, so out of the bigger names, Jay Morrison is the only one that didn't respond. And it wasn't just me. It was my partner. She was also reaching out at the time. And then she kind of just got tired of it and went on to do her thing. She's in, uh, she's a real estate broker. And so she just went on and did her thing. I don't know if she ever followed up on her end. Um, like I said, I kept going and, you know, doing the things I would do. I was doing, uh, with Dr. Anderson or whatever. But my thing is, and I want to be very clear here. That was something good that happened. Unfortunately, it looks like a lot of people are going to walk away with a bad taste in their mouth. And sometimes it happens. Sometimes it's absolute, absolutely nothing you can do. Sometimes it is something you can do. And then sometimes there's some things you have to do on the back end. And it takes a while to clean up the mess. Uh, I hope that Jay does the thing that it takes to clean up the mess. Uh, I've been in a situation. It's, it's about doing the right thing and doing it at the best you can. You can't, you can't do anything beyond what you can do. And trying to do more only exacerbates the situation and, 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 and makes things worse. Do the best you can do to get things straight. But here's the problem. According to what Julian is saying in this video, where he spends approximately 40 plus minutes outlining in detail, and he does it so he's literally writ written the entire thing out and he's reading it and he's literally outlining this. So it's not filler, uh, you know, like you probably get with me, where, you know, I talk and then I get off and I go off on a tangent and then come back. It's bam, bam, bam. And I watched the entire thing. So there are a bunch of different things that you have to look at that's being said. But here's the thing that concerns me is you're talking about a fund that was once worth 11 point something million dollars. Relatively speaking, you also have to understand in the grand scheme of things, 11, 11 million dollars isn't a whole lot of money when you're playing and trying to build wealth for an entire nation of people. Uh, but it's better than we've ever done. Uh, and so, um, I don't want to piss on it, uh, because it's huge in the, in, in the grand scheme of things of what blacks are doing, but it goes to show that in the, put it like this, we, we raised 11 million for the Tulsa real estate fund between October th uh, 31st. And December 24th, we will spend $575 billion in commercial uh, merchandise purchases for Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. We'll spend $47 uh, billion for, for the Halloween fall holidays, and we'll spend another 50-something billion. And then we'll spend 400-something billion between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We spend $2 billion a year on Jordans. We we buy twice as many luxury cars as white people who have a hundred who have a hundred and fifty thousand dollar median household wealth gap on us. So when I tell you eleven million isn't huge, that's what I'm talking about. We have a spending problem in the wrong direction. Uh, investing is where we need to be supporting things that grow us is where we need to be creating new ed educational elements and components is where we need to be programs that develop our youth or, or what we need to be investing in. We don't invest. We buy. We buy beyond our means. We go in debt buying. So that's what I mean. But. If we're just looking at what, what we've been able to do over the last 50 years, just saying $11 million on one particular thing, and that's something we can do. 
I think that we fumble the ball. Uh, and I don't think that we can just solely rest it on Jay showed. I think that some of the heads that could have done something and been more forceful and maybe, maybe, maybe they weren't allowed to, but I think that we should have been saying, Hey, need a board of, uh, trustees. We need people who are going to sit up and be sure to hold the money handlers accountable. Um, again, I understand how something can go left, but to me, this doesn't look like an uh, investment that went left. This looks like a mishandling, mismanagement, and a lack of transparency. One of the things that the people are complaining about is they're not able to get things, and when they are able to get things, it's explained in a way that the average person or the nuanced um, investor uh, would not be able to understand uh, the problem is, as I was getting to earlier, the last time they did a report, which was over a year ago, uh, or almost a year ago, this is 20, oh, well over a year, almost going two years, the last time I had a report, it was only $700,000 out of the $11 million left in the actual account, and only one point two or 2 point something in a asset asset holding so that means they've invested in a total of two point something million in asset holdings and i could be wrong on that so i want to state that i may be a little off a million here or there but that and the 700 so there's a lot unaccounted for and um we're down to seven hundred thousand, and this was almost two years ago so it's a good chance that there's no money in that fund uh, one of the things that Jay was talking about doing was doing another round of fundraising to cover that. Now, obviously, that's good for him because, again, what? He gets 5% uh, management fee on any of the funds that come in. Um, when you have a fund that's sinking like that, a round of fund financing isn't what it needs. What it needs is more than likely liquidation and the paying out of what's left to, uh, in percentage perspective, to the investors, meaning that it's time to cut the losses and pay these people, give them an explanation of what happened and that. Now, also, I, I'm one for the whole truth. He was under scrutiny and investigated by the Securities Commission, and they found no wrongdoing. So he didn't, he, he is by the investigation of the securities industry not doing anything illegal. The question that has been presented and the challenge that has been presented by Julian Gordon is more along the line of ethics and morality. And uh, to me, that's equally important. And those are the things that we have to look at. Again, this isn't about saying you I want perfection. I'm not perfect. Uh, you know, you, you try to do things, you try to do it the best your ability, but somebody asks you a question, you answer it. Somebody asks you what's going on, you answer it. Somebody says, well, what, what, when are we going to get something done, done? You give them the best of your ability to the best of your knowledge, and you keep doing what you can to make it right. That's all you can do. But when you are dodging people, when you are not uh, trying to right the ship, uh, and it seems that the same things that cause the ship to go off course are the practices that are being perpetuated. Then you got to say either you don't have the capacity to do this at this level or you are intentionally moving in a way that does not protect the interests of the people who have entrusted you with their funds. I'm not going to speak to which one it is. I don't know which one it is. I can only tell you the facts that I've shared with you is that there are some things going on that need to be taken care of. Uh, there comes a point when you have a fund and that fund is being managed, that if the fund isn't producing, that the investors should call for a liquidation of the, uh, of the fund and a paying out in percentage. So in other words, if the total fund was 11 point something million, Everybody who contributed to that fund, you can determine what they contributed and determine the, the percentage that they gave to that fund. Well, what's left needs to be broken down in equal percentages and then returned in the same way. Uh, everybody's going to take a loss. Um, if there's no way to correct it, that's the only option. Or you take total losses. And the only person that walks away benefiting is the person who got paid the management fees and the expenses and the other things that it took. Um, to do 
to uh you know that 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 he and his family and uh his wife i think you know he and his wife are a part of it uh she works part time for the organizer uh for the for the fund and so she gets a salary he gets a um uh, percentage and a, some, some some a couple of other people that he knows um again i hate that this happens because there's so much we need black people to come together on there's so much we need black people to stand together on. There's so much that we need to be able to say, hey, we need you to give. And people be like, yeah, we can give because uh, we need to get on code. Uh, we need to get on code because um, they're on code. They, 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 they know when it's time to give. And it doesn't matter. And let me tell you, when they get on code, it's not whether it's right or wrong. Uh, go to the last time that I can think about they got on code. The kid, the white kid who chokes out the homeless black guy and ends up getting charged two days two million dollars that's on code that's on code and it's not that one time you go back and check any time that something has happened between the black community and the white community and the black community begins to push it look like they're gaining ground the white the white community responds with their money police officers uh shootings and and uh police brutality uh complaints defense paid for times 20. that's on code so we really need to develop the capacity to get on code and unfortunately uh we are those who are sitting up looking for reasons not to so when something like this happens we go see that's exactly why i don't give see that's exactly why i don't give see that's why exactly why i don't give and the problem is more people are suffering because of it than the people who are benefiting from by doing things wrong so while you got situations where people are grifting you got people who are grifting in ways that 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 seem legitimate because they're playing with you they got you jumping on stuff and they got those people paying them to shoot you bull crap and got you floundering in it and misled misguided mis 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 misinformed and they're eating they're they're eating real good six figures seven, seven figures and sometimes eight figures for misguiding their people and our people are none the weary to me that's just as big of a grift as somebody that gets your money and then doesn't do anything with it but enrich themselves to me it's the same thing it's a hustle it's a grift and the people who are actually boots to the ground grinding trying to make something happen showing love i just stopped matter of fact and spend a little time with a little young sister. She couldn't have been no more than 19. She's out in the parking lot at the grocery store. And she's selling goods in a little basket. I don't know where she got it from. I hope she didn't steal it. Uh, you know, you know, bought a few things. But sit down and, and talked to her. Gave her the card. Sent her to the center where uh, one of the centers that I function at. Uh, I don't run it. It's not my center. But I go by there and I offer my services as a counselor. Uh, as an advisor to people who are trying to get their lives together. And I said, hey, look, they got some resources there for you. And it's not nearly enough, but it's better than sitting down there. But just sitting down talking, it tells us where our people are at. And not all of our people are lazy. Not all of our people want a handout. To me, being out in that damn hot ass sun, it broke my heart. And she's out there and she's walking and she's actually hustling. That's a hustle. That's out there. I'm selling something. I'm not asking for anything for free. I'm going to give you something in exchange for what you're doing. And you got people out there. And every time I try, I run across, I try to stop. When I give to somebody, I don't just exchange the dollar, the two dollars. I get out and I talk to them. They're human beings. They're suffering and they're going through some things. Uh, we can sit up and we can label them whatever we want to. We can talk about, you know, uh, if they can get out there and hold a sign, they can get a job. Yeah. You, have you checked the unemployment rate and have you checked the unemployment rate specifically among blacks and it definitely specifically among black men it ain't because we don't want to work i could go on and on and on about that but here here's the thing uh shoot i'm always at 40 minutes my, my goal was 25 minutes uh, i'm almost at 40 uh but look My first hope is that Jay finds a way to right the ship. My second hope is that people don't get salted by it. Not just the the 15,000. From what I'm saying, it's 15,000 total investors. 
not just the 15,000 people who believe enough to give, but the millions of blacks who are watching this and going, I told you so. Um, as a person who wakes up every day and I go to work for my business, I work uh, to take care of my family, uh, to uh, ensure that there's a future for my progeny after I'm gone. I work my ass off. I build. Uh, I'm investing in myself and other things. I'm really, truly trying to make sure my kids and my family and their kids and their their, their families on down the line are going to be okay. Um, of course, they would be doing this while I'm doing this uh, video, but it is what it is. Um, you know, what, 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 what I'm trying to say is I want to encourage everybody to not see this as a reason not to give. We, we have to stop looking um, for reasons not to give. We have to stop looking for the negative because there's some people out there that are really trying and doing some great work. Uh, there's some people out there that are really going hard and doing everything they can. Uh, to be a difference maker and I have mad love for you if you're one of those people I have mad love for you if you're out there and you're trying to do the best that you can possibly do and you're limited with resources because nobody wants to give um, it's frustrating it is um, keep your head up don't dare quit you're needed you're necessary and somewhere along the way, we're going to get this thing together. To those who have invested in the real estate fund, if you happen to watch this, the thing is transparency and accountability. Uh, and the thing, from what I understand, it's real hard to get that because there is only this meeting that's being held, however it is, once a, meet, once a week, once a month. Uh, but you can only uh, participate to a certain extent. Uh, the investors don't know who each other are. Who, who each other are so they can't get together co together collectively but i think that julian has created a pathway by opening up and putting this on his platform to where now these people can come together and connect in one time and have discussions that they cannot have on the platform where they were being brought in uh and i think that's the beginning of it i think that is the beginning of getting some answers and getting this thing worked out and to me the goal is to get it worked out if it can be salvaged save it if not it's time to liquidate uh it's time to understand what needs to be done moving forward and i just hope again that it doesn't salt uh the hearts of people who are so necessary to funding and financing the work we need to do in the community so again that's my challenge to you is don't let this salt you to giving to supporting uh, to being a part of the solution because we can't do it without you. And this isn't just about what I do. It's about what I do, but I'm a small portion in a big, uh, well, I'm just one in a, in, in a big, big space and need that we have to meet if we're ever going to truly achieve this empowerment we talk about. And so with that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get off of here. Uh, again, I thank you. Uh, for your time uh, again uh, I want to um, challenge everybody we've got work to do we're getting our butts kicked in so many different ways and I actually kind of took some time off from going hard in the paint I've got a couple of advisors that are telling me I'm, I'm going too hard and I'm doing too much content so I want to make sure the content is quality content and that it's addressing things that need to be addressed but I'm definitely not going to be able to get it down to three times a week I'm just looking at so much that's going on but I'm going to do the best that I can to make sure that when I do come to you I'm coming to you with some things you need to see uh, hear uh, take to heart and most importantly apply my, my, my goal is always about solutions. So once again, my heart goes out to the 15,000 15, investors, whether you gave 10 or whether you gave, uh, I think, 
Uh, Julian said he gave 40,000 um, and everybody is somewhere else around there. Um, but you know, that they're a, a lore. Uh, but I tell you what, um, Julian understands if you, if you watch the video, he understands the way the game is played. You, you, you lose some, it's, it, it's investing. You lose some, what you don't want to do is lose to poor management, uh, poor handling. Uh, and I think that's something that you can manage. You can you can do better. You can sit up and say, okay, from this point on, we need a board of directors. I think if it, if there's a chance to save it, that's the first step. Create a board of directors. Bring in some financial wizards and 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 look at the assets you still have on the table. Look at what you have in cash reserve, and come up with a plan. And I think it's possible, but it's going to have to be egos out of the way. Uh, there's no room for egos. I got it. I know this. This is my thing. I created it. It's about, hey, man, people are hanging on this. And how this goes is going to have a major impact and uh, influence on what people want to do in the future. And I really hope that for that sake, something changes. So with, on that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. Uh, again, if you believe in what I've done, if you find anything that I've done in the community, anything that I do, all the stuff I do with Black Man Lead and uh, the wraparound services and mental health and domestic violence, uh, our research center, which is major because all of our solutions and programs and implementations start at the research level. Uh, if you believe in that, show some love and show some support and donate. Uh, but whatever, whatever the case, we've got work to do. On that note, I'm out of here. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. I'm free to be free.